Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take a midweek break, and talk about some of the stranger things. I'm going to stick with that Netflix just because I keep winning. Going on in the world of Linux. I'm Ben, that's Jill, and uh, there is Pedro together with you joining us live. You know you're supposed to be working. That's all right. We won't tell on you, man. Um, no. <laughs> or after the fact. Once new, everyone, we made it through another week. It is still, I think, universally outside of space Australia, where it is cold because that's how they roll in the summertime. It's brutally warm everywhere, isn't it? Especially over here with uh, hitting 35 on Sunday with like 82% humidity. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, you'll die if you go outside weather. <laughs> what do you, do you do with her? It's been 35 here, um, 34, 35, 32. Um, last, when, when, when we do a show, Saturday at 7.30 wow. p.m., it was 31. Wow. Like at 10 p.m. here, it was like, oh, it's 29 Celsius still. All right. Okay. Oh. <laughs> it was entertaining, though, because by, by the time of the after show, my DSLR, my web camera, uh, it had enough, man, even with an active cooling on it. And it's like, no. <laughs> it started oh. timing out and overheating. Oh, but, boy, yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, my fun thing this week is uh, high OBS project. I'm going to talk about you. Um, years ago, like more than two years ago, I was experimenting with the Jack Audio with OBS because it added support. I'm like, ah, okay, this is horribly unreliable. It doesn't always record. And when it does record, it goes out of sync. I didn't say a lot about it outside of anytime someone asked me, should I use that? I'm like, absolutely not. Unless you want to lose data. Use Pulse Audio, unfortunately, you know, Pulse Audio Jackbridge. The main reason is it fails silently. So you will lose all of your audio. If it fails, it gives you no warning. It says nothing to you. And I didn't think anything of it because it was me. Maybe one other person on this blue ball that was using Jack with OBS, but it's, it would be a very handy feature because we're recording, you know, 12 tracks right now. Um, mm. Then I was perusing GitHub and I saw a bug report. I'm like, oh, somebody else ran into that. And I'm like, oh yeah, here, by the way, it's reproducible. There it is. And I'm like, well, your audio buffer, there's just one line. And that to us, that just says there's an issue on your end. We can do it. It's not a bug. And they closed it. You know what? I'm oh. not even going to fight that battle. All I'm saying, um, all the beautiful, beautiful volunteers that are working the OBS project, you're telling me that failing without informing the user, which will cause data loss, is expected behavior because that's your closed bug right there. That's all I'm saying. You might want to, might want to fix that. But uh, what's new with you, Pedro? Uh, over here, nothing spectacular has been happening. I'm basically bracing myself for the uh, the end of the month, where it's just going to be me doing all oh, of the laptops wow. to send out. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, it, it, it's it's it's. <sighs> but yeah, no. The, for me, I got uh, another one of these. Uh, it's, uh, still waiting the, um, micro switches because the thing with these, uh, Logitech G903 is, is they're very good mice. When and you say uh, when micro people switches, sell them, I, I'm confused because when I say micro switches, I, I just don't envision you desoldering micro switches to replace uh, them. These actually have little plugs. Oh, that they're you Legos. Can unplug from the PCB. Yes, <laughs> I think Logitech kind of expected these to fail. That's why they made them like that. <laughs> they they must and have been using every other micro anyway. switch they've ever used on any one of their devices in the history of ever as evidence of that. Good on you, Logitech. <laughs> <Huh>? Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, no, you can actually buy like a pair for pretty cheap on eBay, but I already used the two good ones that I had for this one. So for the uh, the new secondhand one, uh, I, I had to order two more and they're coming on the very slow boat from China. So yeah. It's new you, Jill. Oh boy. So tomorrow was fun because I joined in. Uh, tomorrow Wimpy, was Martin. fun. How's uh, that tomorrow? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yesterday. <laughs> 
<laughs> Tomorrow will Listen, be fun. Listen, man, yes. call me I old. Borrow your time machine, no, no, John. I'm just saying. Yes, just, just I a second. Another time. We are old I'll be right school. Back. We're doing that linear time thing. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, I met yesterday uh, Martin Wimpress Wimper- from Canonical, Ubuntu's uh, desktop lead. Um, uh, uh, started Wimpy's World Discord channel, which was really cool. And a lot of my friends in the Linux community are in there. So that's been a lot of fun and to talk to Wimpy and, and talk to all my friends. So that's really been cool. And it'll really be beneficial, beneficial for the community. <laughs> be awesome. That, that better than, you know, Telegram. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, yes, oh, much better. I'm, I don't use Telegram anymore. <laughs> in, in fact, I was telling everyone on there, thank you. Now you have Discord accounts because Telegram drives me up the wall. <laughs> so, <laughs> And there's still the group. And I was like, nope, don't say IRC, can't use it. <laughs> <laughs> These Aww. people will always be in existence. I can't reference the exact number of XKCD at this moment, but you know the one I'm talking about. It's a 1,200 something. Yeah, it's a bit <laughs> Let's start mm-hmm. this week off with good news, everyone. The biggest kernel ever, according to Tor Laws. We're talking about um, Linux 5.8. Now, the biggest, most important change is the addition of... Uh, Support for the RME Fireface, RME Fireface UFX, and the Motu Ultralight MK3. I'm just kind of joking. I just want to say, hey, man, FireWire devices continue to get added to the awesome. ULSA stack. That's going to be relevant <laughs> for some stuff I'm working on. But I downloaded it. I compiled it. That's how I roll. Uh, NVIDIA drivers do compile against it. That wasn't a problem. However, if you're using black magic hardware, womp womp. So keep that in mind. If you're playing the home game and I'm not going to touch because I know if I patch the drivers like I did last time, the day I finally get everything uploaded and I'm like, hey, look, here's a repository. Blackmagic could go, hey, look, here's our new drivers. So that's not happening again. There are a couple of new things. It's kind of like an AMD uh, love song with 5.8 because mm-hmm. we're getting new AMD energy drivers for the Zen Zen 2 energy sensors. That's good. Renoir and CPU temp monitoring bonus and the ACP audio support, which is good. Also, kind of makes me happy is we now have support for Power 10 architecture. Okay. <laughs> yes. Not that I'm going to be in, hopefully, not again in a situation where I'm going to be dealing with power or anything like that. It's like, that's cool. And, and Power 9, again, Linux had support pretty early on for that. So, Power 10. Yeah, it's good to see, but I would like more uh, sensors on my X570 motherboard than just the uh, K10 temperature. Ah, uh, yes. That'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it also has support now for the MediaTek MT8173 chipset used in a lot of ARM Chromebooks. So that's always a good nice. thing. Yes. <laughs> and the support for the Odroid C4. Yay! And the Intel Atom camera driver. We've been waiting for that one for a while. So that's that's really cool. And it, another uh, cool little thing is now you have the ability to swap function and control keys on Apple keyboards. Yay! And we all rejoice. <laughs> that's that's something I've been wanting for a while. I don't think anybody's ever, like, t- uh, Apple keyboards are nasty little things. They are yes, laptop they are. keyboards yeah. for your desktop. I've never looked at an <laughs> Apple keyboard and said, like, oh, I, I, I'd rather like some of that. No. <laughs> it's like, yes, they're tiny and they're Bluetooth and they're very good Bluetooth. Uh, but yeah, no. If I wanted to type on a really bad uh, keyboard laptop, I'd, yeah. I I would have asked Slimbook to let me keep that. <laughs> you need to do yeah. what any pure-blooded Linux zealot should do and buy a Microsoft keyboard. I did. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, canonical. They got some new hotness. They do. They have yeah. uh, the uh, release candidates for the 2004.1 ISOs available for download. So if you have a machine that you like to test on or your name is Matthew Commandant, you can uh, download yourself some of that uh, early, early 2004.1. Uh, it's still 
you know, the LTS, they're basically just wanting to test the ISOs and make sure everything is up and running. And it's good for me, specifically. Not that I'm using Ubuntu itself, but KDE Neon is still very much based on 18.04. And if the uh, 20.04 base release is going to be anything like last time, now is the time, or about a month from now is about the time that they're going to be thinking about releasing it. So please do. Mm -hmm. Although I might have a new SSD uh, by that time, so I might just have to do a fresh install regardless. I don't yeah. know, man. <laughs> uh, I, can, can I just keep running Debian? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs> And I know the ISOs are actually dropping tomorrow, Thursday, August 6th. So you don't have too much time to do the testing <laughs> for the final <Yeah>. drop. <laughs> but but that's cool, too. And if you want to do some testing today, Wimpy has already made um, how to test and file bug re reports videos for the 2004 ISOs. So check them and out yes, you to do, see how to do you that. You do still need a uh, Ubuntu One account for that. Yes, correct. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> I don't I've think there's going to be time. too much to worry about because you know, it's a point release. So yeah, it's going to yeah. be a big shake. If so. anything, it'll fix a lot of the issues. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why to look at it. Um, mm -hmm. Let's stay on the canonical train because this dropped <laughs> late last week or early uh, on the 8th. All right. Ubuntu Snap Auto Updates broke my development setup. He sounds a little angry. There's no way to turn them off. Really? You know what? We, we got to take, because there's even a table of contents. You know you're mad when you make a table of contents. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to say, before we get started, I'd like to point out, like, most of these problems come from the user not understanding how snaps work. But I'll also, in his defense, because I, when I read something like this, I'm like, there has to be, there is. You know, I, I didn't know that you could do a couple of things with snaps at, uh, oh, and stick around for the feedback section at the end. Pedro, uh, Pedro's longstanding issue seems to be repaired as well, but... Take it away, Pedro, because I, I, I know you're sitting there just <laughs> warming up your cup of haterade. Yeah, there we go. I mean, Here goes Pedro. <laughs> for my thing, uh, I read the article. It's like, oh, confirmation bias, confirmation bias, confirmation bias. And then I get to the end. It's like, oh, wait, what, 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 wait a second. People are actively blocking snap domains in their hosts file. <laughs> Kudos, Canonical. It took you months to achieve something that it took online advertisers, you know, on the internet, years to accomplish. What You've does this basically piss? boil down to, though? He was trying to set up Cylon, right? Yeah, he. Um, that's what he uses for um, his development environment. It's Sea Lion. So he had that installed and he had everything installed through Snaps. And what he did was he assumed that everything was going to work just fine and eventually all of his plugins stopped working and he couldn't do what he basically couldn't continue working on his projects and um you you'd think that one of the main reasons to have containers be the way to distribute software would be to stop that software from um screwing around with people's um work environments not snaps apparently <laughs> you can definitely look at okay just on that alone i you can see the benefit for auto updates so yes very true <laughs> if you want things to keep working you probably don't want to be using the latest version and with snaps out of the box you don't really have a choice. Tell that I, I'm gonna, <laughs> arch users are gonna come find you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this is snaps. This is Ubuntu we're talking about. <laughs> um, to be fair, I mean the auto updates issue is still being discussed by Snap developers currently. They're like, we should we have it as an option? Something I would definitely go with the option. Um, the, this is what I learned because I like to research this stuff, man. Um, the previous two versions of like the app that you have installed or stored locally 
and you can revert them. Uh, you, there's a setting called refresh.retain and just put how many versions that you want to maintain on your local box. Um, I think the big thing is like, it doesn't matter if you're using snaps or flat packs, you're testing in production. I mean, yeah, exactly. things are going to break. It's, that has been my big <laughs> issue with both of them. Like, I think they need more time in the oven, but then again, things need to break before they get fixed. So with the way Canonical has been promoting snaps, you'd think they were the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> Listen, man, it worked for Mir. Jilt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, uh, plugins of any app usually get borked with updates and especially really snaps are a rolling release. So this is just, you, you kind of got to know that before you, you start using them. <laughs> so, and you know, what was interesting in the article, he said that snaps um, updates are worse than the updates on Windows 10. I, I'm sorry, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> for snaps can be easily removed um you have a choice with snaps uh, not using them whereas with windows updates you usually don't have a choice unless you do a lot of work <laughs> especially on the desktop end <laughs> no uh you yeah, install the windows hack it's, it's called windows 7 just keep windows 7 it's fine <laughs> yes <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, uh, I mean, more power to the guy for writing a table of contents and stuff like that. But as much as I would love to get on like snaps or evil, and or the guy didn't do this. Is like just some basic looking around because that took me 20 seconds to find. And like, yeah, uh, he, he did. This one of the things he mentions is the after a refresh, the next, uh, rec next refresh can be delayed for up to 60 days, after which a refresh will be performed regardless of the refresh.hold value. But you can always revert back. Yes, until uh, it refreshes after 60 days, and then you have to revert back again. <laughs> Pile. <laughs> Blocking the domains <laughs> on the host file. <laughs> Seriously, canonical, that's... Stop. Just stop. <laughs> this, like, it, it would genuinely terrify me here. Like, I couldn't hang with anything auto updating because it's like this has to work this has to work and i know this works i know this next version of previous but i don't know man and i am too far removed from the desktop experience to even remotely comment on that but what i can talk about is keyboards because man i love blinky clacky keyboards man can't get enough <laughs> of it wake up in the morning you know, have the keyboard now. It's not even plugged in. I can just hit it and make noise and annoy people. It's awesome. Oh, no. Ven does not. <laughs> Don't let him trick you. <laughs> so this is uh, System 76. Never heard uh, of they're... them. What do they do? <laughs> oh, boy. They, they um, have wonderful uh, Linux-based computers that they make in-house. Um, and they use Pop! OS on those computers. And... This is actually, they're, they're working on a new keyboard. And this keyboard is not only going to be a modular where you can switch the keys physically around on the keyboard, but also will have a software to help you do so. And um, it's, it's also, uh, this keyboard is to help with the, the new uh, tiling manager features in Pop! OS, which are really cool. So there'll be some shortcuts for that. And there's, they're, they're definitely going to be getting feedback from the community on this, on what they would like in a keyboard. And one of their ideas was instead of making the space bar so huge, you know, making it much shorter and then putting the backscape space key next to the space bar. And I think that's, you know, really efficient. And that, you know, <clears throat> System76 has a great track record for innovation. So who knows what they will come up with? <laughs> <laughs> yeah see um you mentioned that uh space bar and backspace next to each other <laughs> yeah see as someone who uh biology very much uh shafted ah, yes. um <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, true <laughs> right from birth too uh i 
like the current uh, layout of keyboards, and I don't think I'm the only one because all of the custom keyboard layouts that we've seen pop up here and there, uh, they don't go anywhere. They they end up being very niche markets. They probably have a very dedicated cult following, but it's a niche within a niche within a niche. Especially one developed by System76, at which point you throw in the Linux niche into <laughs> those other niches. Okay, I hope they nail it, and I hope uh, I will eat these words. But yeah, no, my hands, good luck. <laughs> yeah, not good for Pedro. Well, you know, the, the System76 has such a great track record for innovation and... And, you know, making things like, for instance, uh, they're going to make it an open firmware modular keyboard, which, which is really awesome. And like Pedro was, was saying, there is niche keyboards out there that do that. Uh, but I think System76, they can, they can do it. They have, you know, the collateral behind them and, and people know the name, um, especially in the Linux world. So I think they can do it. And speaking of uh, unique keyboards, I have one here. This is called the Vortex Core. That's it is one of the yes. <laughs> this is one of the hardest keyboards to use. It was the the I got this about six years ago. It was I can the see very... why. Like <laughs> oh look, I hate myself. Let me get something that's hard to type on. Wholly impractical. I think it's the size yes. of my hand. <laughs> it, it is. It is. Um, the, the smallest mechanical keyboard ever made, actually, the smallest keyboard, and it's got three layers of controls. So I'm sure System76 is going to make something much easier to use than this thing I'm just, is. I'm just trying to, it's like, I need something that, give, give, give me a form factor that's unusable, and I need it to make noise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Be what extra loud. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually got used to using it after a while. That's why you had to while. go dig it out of somewhere. To, yes. Yeah. Mm, yeah, it sounds perfect. Um, it's like, oh, I can use this now, cupboard. Yep. <laughs> so, but Ben should be happy. It isn't blinky, which is nice. I got the non-blinky version. That's because they didn't have RGB at the time. <laughs> You're kind of right, yes. I know I'm right. <laughs> they were just starting the RGB. <laughs> So what I'm thinking about is what everyone's secretly at, System76, got to ask a real question. What are going to be my options for the wood trim? Okay. <laughs> Very yeah. good. Actual you can also get in red and, you can get the wood planning, paneling in red and blue now too, <laughs> which is really cool. But I've been wanting a Thelio, you know, the first, one of the first yeah, open I want a firmware too, Linux but it's machines. For other <laughs> <laughs> Good news, everyone. <laughs> One password for Linux is in development preview. I like this, man. Uh, a full featured Linux desktop app has been our most requested feature by far and responsible for the longest forum post in our history. And you acted on the long. Do you hear that, Gog? Do you see how that's supposed to work? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay, deaf ears. Uh, okay, a couple of things. Uh, this is for testing and validation purposes at the moment. Not suitable for business critical environments. And uh, I know you were thinking. Probably thinking the same thing I was. Oh, great. Another Electron app. Nope. Incorrect. It's better. Slightly. Because it's Rust. So it is completely native. And it's got all the support. You know, Max11 clipboard integration, clearing, and all that open network locations, automatic dark mode based on your GTK theme. Nice. What about my QT theme? <laughs> no? I, I, personally, okay. I, I prefer my widget sets to be under a non-restrictive license. <laughs> I look forward to the days when uh, KD becomes GTK based. I mean, the K is already there, so they could easily do it. <laughs> It's gonna get the first ones down, man. It's P that's all you gotta do, right? You do is change it. Yep. Yep. Uh, I don't. This is the first. Uh, I mean, I knew one password was a thing. I don't personally use it, but that options there. Do they have like mobile integration and stuff like that? I didn't get a chance to check it out. They completely. have mobile apps. I'm not entirely sure how good the integration is because I don't use it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't either, but it's just, it's just, it's nice to have another um, option under Linux with the software. Yeah, really something cool. to give uh, <laughs> key pass X uh, a bit of a and uh, last pass. run yeah. for its money. <laughs> I'm, 
I had to throw that in because I was just reading through that, and I know it's just like a password manager, but coming out and saying, yeah, a lot of people request this, and you know what? We're going to do it because you want it. <laughs> Amazing how that works, right? So, Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> That's how it's supposed to work, Doug. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're never getting the Galaxy Glide. Nope. No, sir. <laughs> and I don't have to guess who put this in the notes. Yes. Speaking so, of Electron. Yes. So we've talked about the Electron wrapped Windows 95 that came out in 2018. And now here is Mac OS 8 in all its Electron goodness. And this is for the 23rd uh, birthday of Mac OS 8. This was released. And so this is a virtual machine, which is emulating a 1991 Macintosh Quadra 900 with a Motorola CPU. And I actually have one right under my desk right now, but it's a little heavy to get. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it, it has all the classic Mac OS apps you're used to, Stuff It, Expander, Movie Player, Simple Text, etc. But it also has demos for all the Adobe products that were around then, including Adobe Premiere 4.01, <laughs> which I used to teach, teach um, years ago. And so it was nice playing with that again. And lots of classic games like uh, Duke Nukem 3D and Dungeons and Dragons. So it's it's really actually really well done. It doesn't have internet support yet, but it does include Netscape Navigator and Internet Exploder. Yes, <laughs> Exploder, <laughs> what we used to call it. But it also has this really nice fe feature like a lot of VMs do is where you can share your files easily uh, with the virtual machine and install your own classic apps or bring in files. And um, that's easily done. There's instructions actually on the bottom of the of the screen on how to do that. And you just got to drop them in a folder and uh, reboot reboot the virtual machine, and you can install all your old classic apps. Hmm. So it's nice. really, really, really well done. I was really impressed. That's great. You can finally you know... donate all of your old hardware now that you're this. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, Electron I... is going to be the end of Jill's hoarding. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> so on on my Quadra below, I have Linux on it, and and it dual boots and Mac OS eight as well. <laughs> so I have Linux on all my things, but I, I sure I to represent the old hardware, I always keep the original OSs on the machines. <laughs> I probably shouldn't mention that uh, El Chipo is technically running as a Hackintosh right now, but <laughs> nice. Wonderful. <laughs> Running Catalina, but yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> <That's> nice. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong with closed source proprietary operating system that both of you monsters are running or even allow in your house. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Admittedly, well, my... I did that just to see if I could. <laughs> see, what you're about to hear right now is called excuses, if you're unfamiliar. Yeah. Um, hey, I am a collector, so I have to have hoarder. the original OSs as well. <laughs> but I make sure, you know, my collection is unique that I get Linux. I try and get Linux running on every machine in here, you know, back from to my old uh, Dex, to my Mac Classic back there. Yeah, I got Linux running on everything. <laughs> it took a lot of work, too. Right, <laughs> takes a lot of work. ladies and gentlemen. What do we have up next? <laughs> GIMP. Up next, we have, uh, well, yeah, it's uh, GIMP's own Tippy. And you can download, mm, well, you mm. can uh, donate uh, some of your uh, hard earned monies to help develop the GIMP. And uh, this one is being hosted by Zimarmot. And yeah, basically, they've been uh, helping develop um, GIMP and improve like multi layer tablet, uh, like the drawing tablets, Wayland, flat packs, uh, layer links, and everything else. And if you'd like to tip them, go ahead and do just that. And uh, the one that really stuck out to me, because I may or may not have heard uh, Anori say, it's like, <laughs> if I unplug the drawing tablet from GIMP to use the mouse for a while, and then I plug it back in, it stops working. It's like, yeah, you got to save, close, and reopen it again. It's like, that's not cool. <laughs> no, no, it isn't. But hey, it's getting fixed. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, really awesome. And and they're also um what's really cool is in their flat pack now you can use plugins. Yay! Um that is really awesome. 
Um, and uh, one of the most popular ones is Gmic, and they've already created um, created the installs for the most popular plugins, which is really wonderful. That's something that was missing with the flat pack version. Hey, I always here's install an native. Idea. If but... you're using something that requires plugins, uh, as I genuinely had half a day <laughs> wasted. Thanks, Pop um, OS <laughs> from System76, because Adore 6 is packaged as a flat pack. And Adore is effectively useless without plugins. Um, be it X42, yeah. CAF, the stack stuff I have running on this screen over here. And we couldn't figure out why the guy could not pick up his LV2 plugins. And fortunately, uh, we have a System76 person in our Discord. So it was like, yo, and he took too long. So Matthew from Lutris was like, yeah, it's a flat pack. I'm like, oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> that needs to come with a warning label. Also, please, if, if the software, like, again, don't, don't install that as a container. It's just going to lead to headache unless you just need the basic version. This is why, like OBS, man, you show up in the OBS Discord and you're like, hey, I installed this app. And you're like, it's not supported. Go away. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I don't like having my time wasted. <laughs> so go ahead and install the native version and make sure to donate to the work of uh, Zay Marmont um, using Patreon or in the above link. And, you know, they're working right now on a 2D animated movie um, using only the GIMP. Doesn't and... have the most adorable four eye bird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That was on their, their update. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> But yeah, so they're working really hard on GIMP development. So go support them. Hmm. They're awesome. And I'm one of their patrons too. I have been since the beginning. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have anything to add, Pedro? No, I was just going to uh, point the uh, comment. You're going to power through it anyway, aren't you? Okay, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because he's, uh, he's, uh, the uh, person is like, yeah, look, I, I don't want to write this twice. So if you're a French speaker... I'm only going to write this the once. Uh. Feel free to comment in French, and I might reply in French as well. <laughs> Do it in Portuguese, man. <laughs> I don't know if he speaks Portuguese, though. That, that, that's the funny part of the joke. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have to say it. Yes. Because Microsoft, Microsoft loves Linux. <laughs> Yeah, it does. Oh, uh, yes, it does. <laughs> and in this particular case, Blender. So Microsoft is joining the Blender Foundation's Development Fund as a corporate gold member, giving over $35,000 annually. That's awesome. And, you know, Tan Rosendahl, chairman of the Blender Foundation, he, he had a really good quote in the article. And he states, it's another important signal that the industry migrates to open source and finds ways to contribute to it. Yes, right on. And I think this also really helps prove to the world that Blender is not only one of the top apps used in the film and TV industry, but in science projects and AI modeling, which Microsoft is using it for. They're using it to, to uh, create um, human figure meshes uh, for AI. And uh, that makes, makes sense, as well as Blender is used hugely on Windows, and they want to make sure that it runs really well on the platform. So that's uh, kudos to Microsoft for supporting one of the best 3d animation software out there yay yeah and <laughs> blender is absolutely deserving of the monies and microsoft especially lately as far as linux is concerned anyway we're not talking about TikTok, the past anything else <laughs> uh but lately as far as linux is concerned basically ever since they uh let go of the uh x fat uh patent they're doing all right they're yeah. genuinely doing all right. So by all means, carry on. <laughs> nope. Um, this just <laughs> chills me to my bone and, and so I have multiple bones these days. Um, <laughs> it was an upgrade. Check this out. 
I, I get worried, like, you know, you're, when like something really good happens to you and it's like, well, you know what? The universe has to balance this out. So when's the other shoe going to drop? It, it negates <laughs> the good. You can't enjoy the good because like, I know the bad's coming. Microsoft has a habit of like, when they do something good, they got to do something really old school, mid nineties, Microsofty to compensate for it at some point. It might be buying TikTok. Um, yeah, yeah. TikTok. <laughs> yes. <laughs> TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> TikTok. Man. That's a can of worms all of its own. And yeah. uh, I, for one, am getting the popcorn ready. Oh. <laughs> hey, man, they're going to make it a Windows Phone exclusive app. <laughs> uh, good one. <laughs> the platform is dead, but you can just go to the Windows Store and install it. It's, great. <laughs> it's brilliant. Oh, man. Um, if you think we're great, possibly brilliant, and you want to support what we do and get some stuff back as like a little reward, it's a big thank you for mm -hmm. helping us out because we are completely listener funded and we don't have ads or any of that fun stuff in the podcast patreon.com forward slash linux gamecast come hang out with us in our super secret private discord that basically you just link to also if you uh sub to us on twitch that's where we're at the other six days of the week but we got a bunch of uh little perks access to the show notes Early access to well, how many? We have six levels. Yeah, man. Yeah. Executive Yay. producers, advisor levels. All of those come with curious, fascinating, and perplexing rewards. But we do want to thank each and every mm -hmm. one of you who make this possible. This is a side project that's completely gotten out of hand, and it's brilliant. It's your fault, too. Um, <laughs> I got to thank a couple of people this week. I do. Yes, you do. So where do I want to start? Uh, let, let's go old school, because if you pick up anything to prove that you're fiscally irresponsible, you end up on the fine upstanding cannibal wall, which that's fine. But then, then we have the thing where we'll read out any message that you send us on Amazon, which is a horrible idea. Horrible idea. But we do it anyway, <laughs> because, hey, it's kind of fun, right? Noctilus. Um, I had a thing on the studio, which, is a, which was a replacement. Oh, let's get that way over here. For the Elecom Huge, which is the best trackball ever made, period. And they're extremely reasonably priced. They're like 50 bucks. Mm, all Japanese on the box, instruction manual. There's The only English we were able to find was the open tab right here, plus the name. He picked that up as a replacement for my other one. So that's awesome. It works. Thank you. That is kind of brilliant. But a guy who's already on the board, a guy who just wanted to send me a message. Linux New Room. Linux New Room. <laughs> I was talking to Pedro earlier on uh, the pre show, which you can listen to on Discord if you just want audio only. Um, I respect this. I respect this. <laughs> Th this is near and dear. <laughs> I mean, this really genuinely touched my feeling. When, when the show <laughs> singular <laughs> i'm not greedy um <laughs> this this is an additional um fiber optic module 10 gig 8, 850 nanometer for things things of now you enterprising people might say Vin, don't you need two of those to make that work yeah you do um <laughs> That's why I like this because this is uh okay, I need to go buy the other one in the cable so I can do that video. Thank you, Linux Neuro. I respect Yay. that. Um Yay, Linux Neuro. You, you gave Ven one third of what he needed. <laughs> it's a start. <laughs> That's a poison gift. So <laughs> That's awesome. I have to read what you wrote. Roses are red, and violets are blue. How did Frank die? Was it Carol? From Linux Neuro. I'm stretching the ram a little bit there, but okay. <laughs> awesome, Linux Canero. He's so good with words. <laughs> He's amazing. Peter? <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, I also have uh, someone to thank. Um, and uh, on my end, it was Basil, who got me two things. One of them was this um, little Wi-Fi card, Intel Wi-Fi card, that goes on an AMD-based uh, ASRock A300 Mini, which I don't have either. Um, 
So while Ven has to buy another one of them and a cable, I need to spend 150 pounds to buy a brand new computer. Well, you see, you, you but do I will. have to plan ahead a little bit because <laughs> I initially put a... T we have a little baby thread ripper and I'm like, oh, I want to play with a new one. So I put up like a TRX 40 motherboard and I'm like, oh no, don't do that. <laughs> it's like crap that, yeah. that's how i ended up uh having to completely rebuild the uh the steam box when our third got beat a 1650 thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no bessel also had a message about the um wifi card and the other item i hope these items go together from basil the other item was a uh ushanka for Nori, uh, which uh, she has uh, put on momentarily for... Um, I think it's a little bit... Know. <laughs> it's so cute. Is that or Nori's <laughs> like, you know what? I like this cap. Why? What do you call it, Nori? I call it, I've had enough Pedro today cap. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's absolutely fair. And um, she put it on. It's like, does this even look good on me? It's Actually, yes. Yes, it does. So kudos, uh, the Atomic Ass. You got that right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. So yeah, thank you very much, Basil. Let's get in to a slice of pie. Because this is going to give it to us. That's got a brilliant. <laughs> Starting up first is a, nice pie. a Blinky Pie. This is Harmonize Project. Now, I've seen other products on the market that do just this. What I'm talking about, uh, you, you, you know exactly what that's going to do, right? Let's mm -hmm. click on the YouTube video. So mm -hmm. if something's going on the TV, it is going to kind of color match with some LEDs on the back. Mood lighting, I mean, taken mm -hmm. to the um, extent. Uh, this is an open source project that you can use a Raspberry Pi. I'm guessing any. Yeah. Well tested on Pi 4B. So... 256 megs of RAM. You don't need to. USB, HDMI capture, a splitter. What about the um, blinky aspect of it? Where does that come in? You plug that as a USB to the Raspberry Pi. Did they just make one? I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> Ceiling light? Oh, does it just work off regular? Um... Hmm. I don't know, man. I... I just wanted to give this a plug because <laughs> for me, this would be like prank warfare. I would hate to have this if I showed up like one day at my house and like I cut the TV on and started changing colors. I, I would scream demons <laughs> and just, you know, like, you know what? Nothing a good coat of fire gun fix. Yeah. <laughs> what are your thoughts on it, Jill? Well, I, I, I think this is really cool. Um, actually, uh, there's a series, um, Razor Chroma uh, light, uh, has a lighting system that works with Philips Hue lights as well, but it's very, very expensive. So yeah. there have been different projects that are trying to emulate that um, much cheaper. And this is one of them. And this looks like one of the best because it's open source and it, it's not just for games as well. It's in anything, any video that's running through the connection. So and that's the big one. It's an open source something that drives yeah. the Philips Hue, which we haven't had up to now. So Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please, <laughs> more of this. I have a Philips Hue light bulb. I bought it to mess with an insect, <laughs> but that's a story for a different time. <laughs> I guess I'm down with this. Um, I, I, I like that it exists because it's one of those things like I would never have that in my house, but I know people who would dig something like that outside of just the Ooh. novelty of it. I would. Mm -hmm. I would. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. People do have not terribly big screens, but uh, like to watch movies in the dark and you want to ease that eye strain from having the really bright screen and the not lit at all background. This supposedly is what the hue and the ambient lighting behind the monitor is meant to help you with supposedly I get, i've seen the demonstrations I'm just like, <laughs> it's genuinely like i get it but that's as far as i can go with it like yeah, have fun ben with does, it ben doesn't like the blinky blinkies <laughs> any of the rgb stuff <laughs> he just <laughs> Yeah, um, that's right up there with like, oh, I like, and dangly keys. Do you like that too? Um, no, Pedro, we'll lose you. You'll never come back. 
<laughs> you know, I want to do a cut of the show where you're doing that and it's looped for like 14 minutes. And, oh my. Uh, ASMR? <laughs> Keys. <laughs> one of the cool things you can do with Linux, um, one of the little stories I'm working on is what happened with this audio interface. Real quick, just a little background is Mark of the Unicorn, they released an audio interface. And of course, we're like, hey, man, we could we take a look at the protocol because Firewire, even though it had a standard, no one used just the base standard it class compliant. One thing you can thank Apple for, your audio interfaces, your sound cards, working on Linux is Apple. And like, if it doesn't completely adhere to the standard with USB, you can't install drivers on your iDevice. So, womp womp. But Motu just straight up like, go away, Linux, any developer, we're not giving you anything. So it got completely reversed engineered in just everything of it. I love this thing because everything works out of the box perfectly. Spite. Spite's a good motivator, isn't it, Pedro? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah. There's a point. To <laughs> oh, that story. I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah, no, the actual upcoming story is very much um someone who got over buying a smart device uh which then got shut down mm. because the parent company straight up um sold the product to another company and the other company was like no nope, sorry and uh he bought a two thousand dollar flywheel uh home bike which is two thousand dollars you yes. might you spend two thousand dollars on a smart exercise bike and the server shut down that's the biggest f you of any smart device it's like really that was money down the drain that i just spent <laughs> but you know enterprising person ptx2 uh decided you know what maybe i can make uh the bike work with another fitness app that does the same thing because there are other competing brands and so he loaded up a uh, bluetooth uh, packet capture thing on his mac he started capturing the bluetooth um packets and then testing on the bike what they did which uh packets meant what for the application and then he wrote a little uh shim application that runs on the Raspberry Pi, which captures the, um, the Pi, well, it captures the, the bike's inputs and translates that into another app. Uh, in his case, he was using Zwift, I believe, that is the other one. And you can see, like, the, um, the life, what, what's it called? Flywheel home bike is now working with Zwift via the Raspberry Pi, which is amazing that is actually really really awesome and yeah i think if i spent two thousand dollars on something that turned into a brick i probably would have done it too <laughs> that can be a motivator sometimes yes. isn't it? it's like i yeah. have to make this work um just two thousand dollars <gasps> Reading this, I, I found that there's like a massively online multiplayer system for like joggers mm -hmm. and bikers that they get together yeah. and like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. I, <laughs> that's like their uh, social thing now that they're stuck at home. Right. That, that's how they socialize. <laughs> that, 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 that's neat. Um, yeah. Spite can be a big, what do you think about like products as a service though? Because I'm, I'm just... A couple of times I've been thinking about like my security system I have on the house, like my ring doorbells. And like when when that goes down, they're not terribly useless. After, well, useful after that. Yeah, they, there needs to be something that is service agnostic, or maybe someone who is clever and inventive enough that sets up a generic service that all of those rings and those cameras and those. Um, exercise bikes and even your phone now that there's a bunch of um third-party operating systems for your phone even for that well i mean it please i don't know about something, like, <laughs> something with like video recording stores like that you can absolutely make it over open source because you know what i'm still gonna pay you to host it mm -hmm. 
<laughs> yes. that's how you make money it's like you create the software open source people will try it and it's like oh wait a second i need this need this to be reliable <laughs> then you have option b if they go and you can spool up a nas at home and play the home mm -hmm. yeah i think that's yeah. pretty cool well, there is Mycroft and uh, some other services out there. But yeah, like Pedro was saying, getting it all the Internet of Things to be open and, uh, you know, free yes. from... We need more yeah. Internet of Things <laughs> and less Internet of bleep. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Hardware is a service. <laughs> Hi there, Stadia. GeForce Now. How you doing? Ah. <laughs> uh, Maybe some people want to tell us about wow. their hardware service plans and ideas, <laughs> yes. man. You you want to sell us on this? Why it's better? How can they do? You that? can. You absolutely can. You can send us your spam emails for your Kickstarter campaign that you might not even start at one point. We got a lot of those. Won't make it. That um, requires reading, and our spam <laughs> golem will nuke it. So we'd have to read. It. Yes. Or you can try and describe your idea without, you know, triggering the spam golem by going to Linux Game What if I try to describe my button. idea using nothing but ASCII art? Oh, very cool. The then. formatting might end up a little bit skewed. Oh, uh, eight equal equals D, no? <laughs> you are a dirty minded young man. I write the <laughs> Wait, eight zero zero eight five. I was trying to no? represent a snowman. <laughs> you monster! Oh, <laughs> that's a really tiny snowman. Uh, and I wear spectacles, so I have an excuse. But yeah, the contact form. Just make sure you pick LWDW. That's how you send some uh, feedback our way. <laughs> I'm take this first one. I'm take All this right. first. It's about snips from Predator Eight Bit. <laughs> It's like, yo, Pe this is a Pedro heavy segment. Um, I just wanted to mention that Pedro can finally solve his problem. <laughs> I, I thought this was going to be like multi-chapter, but you no, know, it's just with snaps. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this, if you're unfamiliar, Pedro will like lock onto something and he'll hang on to it. And it's been the dot folder, the dot snap folder, which I'm like, ah, there, there is no dot. That is my problem. It's just a lowercase folder. It's just called Snap. It's, it's, it's lowercase it's and it's folder. visible. It works like a dot <laughs> folder. It just doesn't have a dot in front of him. And Pedro couldn't hide it. And, well, <laughs> there's one simple trick, Pedro, to fixing yes, that. Yes, I know about the hidden, and you push the name of the folder, like echo name of the folder, to the dot hidden file in the um, home directory and it works in Nautilus and it works in uh, Dolphin and it works in a bunch of the other file managers as well. The thing is, I don't want to hide it. I don't want it there. And if it is going to be there, at least capitalize the first S. It Listen, this sometimes Pedro just wants something to complain about. You gotta realize that. <laughs> so what, what, while you're Actually, doing like didn't the bring it up thing. during the show at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just echo um name of the folder greater than dot hidden. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now you can use snaps, Pedro, for complaining about it. Uh no. <laughs> Again, I just said, I don't want to hide it. I want to see what's on my home folder. Unless it starts with a dot, at which point, if I have to see it, you probably already screwed up. You, wait, <laughs> you hide dot files? What's wrong with you? Because I just I <laughs> like to have those folders visible. And if I have to go into, like, dot local or dot config for any reason, again, you've already you done goofed. Right. Listen, it snaps. Just close your right <laughs> eye. You won't see it. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> My right eye is the one that can't see very well. So if I close it, I'll probably end up seeing better. <laughs> I'll take my chances. Just give it a try. <laughs> NVMA. Oh. That doesn't oh. seem right. It, it's from your bestest buddy, Pedro. What's he got to say? Okay. Uh, it's it's uh, Earl Cameron or Monster Cameron, as we know him. Pedro is wrong again. All right, fine. What did I get wrong this time? 
iPhones have been using NVMe drives for a few years now. Most high-end, I assume, Android phones you, uh, use UFS3 because NVMe and UFS3 are not the same thing. Uh, and Intel has had several competitive mobile processors. <laughs> With the latest being Lakefield with Intel's first implementation of Big Little. Uh, so, Pedo, please do your research. Or, so your research. Sorry, my bad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that first point there, you got me. You do. I don't care about iPhones uh, unless I have to deal with them at work for some reason. And that's where it ends. I refuse to pay can we more do than 200 can we? Can we do this? Everybody who's owned an iPhone on the show raises their hand. <laughs> that's why i know i don't care for them at all um do as i, I also say refuse, children <laughs> i also refuse to uh pay more than 200 dollars for a phone because it's stupid and if i am going to pay the premium tax yeah at that point i might just buy an iphone that's just not going to happen uh so yeah no that first point you got me Second point, I'm pretty sure I did mention the Big Little architecture last week when we were talking about, like, the phone as a computer or as a processor uh, paradigm, like the convergence thing. I specifically mentioned having, like, four little cores and eight big cores, like Intel is doing with Lakefield, as you brought up. Uh, and I specifically mentioned that in... You're saying that Intel has competitive mobile processors at this point in time when Ryzen is kicking their butts up and down the alley, be it in performance, thermals, uh, energy efficiency. You've done better. You've had better arguments before. That was coming out to you <laughs> in the pre-show. Oh, man. The camera just Ooh. went to sleep. Um, yes. <laughs> I was pointing out to you in the pre-show that uh, Earl won. Yes, yes, yes. So you got a reply out of me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But I like, that's why I like Monster Cameron, because he elicits this flair of... Uh, Keep you in check, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> he does, and I appreciate that. Uh, him and Mir, they're very, very, very good at that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Which is why I am somewhat disappointed that half of this email was desperate. Personally, like grasping at straws. Personally, I find it cruel that they take advantage of your disability, but I'm not going to judge. <laughs> Beautiful people, we got to get out of here. Roll some credits, and thank you for tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>